Hi, I'm Tyler Colt from Zanata Consulting. Uh, this tutorial will be on workflows inside of Zoho campaigns and was taken as an excerpt from our 2022 webinar. Uh, if you do find it useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. That really does help us out. And if you have any questions or feedback, leave that in the comment section as well. We do read every single one. Enjoy. Alrighty, so with that, let us jump right in. So earlier we had used workflows to associate our segment with a particular topic. Um, that is one big use case for workflows like list management, topic management, really any type of if then statement inside of campaigns. Um, but one of the biggest things that you're gonna use workflows for is to create uh, kind of long form drip email sequences. So some applications will call these journeys, sequences, drips, right? There's a lot of different terms for it. I think Zoho is the only one who calls them workflows. So some people, when they start up the application, they're looking for sequences or journeys and they can't find them. Um, it's because they named them workflows. So again, here, we'll go ahead and create a new workflow and we're gonna make this a custom workflow again. I will highlight now that we're talking about email, you can definitely start from one of these templates and kind of make some adjustments. Um, sometimes it is helpful to see kind of, you know, what does a normal welcome series look like? You know, what does a normal uh, product trial look like? And so, you know, you can surely start from this as a kind of baseline and then make some adjustments. Um, for us, we're going to go ahead and just make a custom workflow. And let's say we wanted to do a quick little welcome series for the newsletter. So, you know, when you first sign up, sure, you're going to get that email once a week. But maybe for the first, you know, six weeks, we're going to send you something extra every other week, you know, something new or something different that might not be exactly the newsletter. And so again, what first thing we'll need to do is associate how we want to trigger or start this workflow. There are a lot of different ways to do that, right? It could be a certain form being submitted, entering a list or a segment, um, a big one or something like a date field. Right. So something like, you know, we closed a deal with a customer six months ago. So on day six month plus one, we want to drop them into this series of emails to kind of re-engage them for some future business. Um, other things too, you know, if you are using e-commerce and kind of tying that in, you can do abandoned cart workflows, purchase follow-ups, or kind of product interest follow-ups, all just through these workflows. Um, so a lot of different options there of how to actually get someone in. Um, but for us, we're going to use this segment entry. Um, this is the most common one that you're going to find yourself using kind of just based on what type of contact they are. So similar here, I'll do our newsletter and we're going to include all contacts that are a part of that segment and any new that are added in the future. Now I'll show real quick the kind of process section here. So if you are doing any type of kind of longer form or kind of crazier uh, implementation here, you might pull in some extra fields and do some conditions. You know, maybe I want to say if they are in the West Coast versus the East Coast, kind of branch them based on their state or their zip code, right? And so you could add things like these conditions and, you know, use any of the fields that you have, which, you know, are likely going to be syncing over from the CRM to essentially set up that type of branch, right? So I could say if state contains, you know, X, Y, and Z, then go ahead and put them down this path versus the other. Um, in this case, we're gonna go ahead and delete this and we'll kind of focus on the main thing that you'll be doing, uh, which is sending emails. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag in the send email action, right? Cause this is a big one. Now, of course, you can do an A-B test natively through here. You can do a survey through here and an SMS as well. Um, but for us, we'll keep it simple. Now, under the create message, we're not going to spend a lot of time here because this is exactly what Brett just showed on setting up a campaign. It's, it's the same thing. You're going to associate it to a topic. You're going to define your subject line, going to add your sender and then add your content and then get it approved. Right, so not much that we need to work or work through here, uh, save you the time of just watching me do that same thing. Um, but the main thing that you'll find that gives you a lot of flexibility and control here within the workflows 
is the ability to actually track and actually branch based on responses to an email that you've sent, right? So if I click that response button, what you'll find is that we have a lot of different options where we're able to branch, not based on a field that's in the contact, you know, what state they're in, what newsletter they're a part of, but actually based on how they reacted to this particular email that they received. And so the big ones that you're gonna do, right, a, a lot of the time are gonna be a branch if they open it, and then a branch if they clicked on a specific link. What you'll also want to include is a branch for delivered, because that means they received it but did not open or click it, right? So if you don't include delivered, you'll only continue if there's an open or a click of a link. And so now what we'll see is that it's essentially given me three little branches off of this email. And now we're going to jump into these and kind of show you how you would continue the flow based on those. But there's one little thing that, you know, it might be floating around in your head right now looking at this is that technically speaking, someone could enter this segment at any time of the day, right? They might be on your website at 1130 PM, right? They sign up for a newsletter via a form. We might not want to email them this first message right away. Right. We might want to put some kind of delay or control in to make sure that they receive it at a good time of day. Right. So like Brett's talking about, let's say Tuesday at 10 a.m. is our goal of when we want to start this workflow. So what we can do is actually add a little action here for a wait time. We're going to delete this connector and we're going to add this in. So now when they enter the segment, it's going to enter this wait. And then only when this is satisfied, is it actually going to continue and send this first message. So by default, it's waiting one hour. That's not really what we want here. Um, but what we can do is say that it has to wait for a certain period of time, but then it's only going to send it within a parameter that we define here, right? So currently it's in GMT. Uh, I'm in mountain time, so I'm just going to put MST here. Yeah, we'll just do that one. So you control your time zone. In this case, let's say we want to send it between, and you want to give it a little bit of a buffer here, just depending on um, you know server capacity at the time. It's you know plus or minus a couple minutes. So let's say I want to make sure that we're going to wait at least for twelve hours, and then it has to send between nine thirty and ten thirty a.m. on a Tuesday, right? And so you might not even really need this wait time to be so long. You know, just in case they signed up just that morning, if you wanted to say, hey, if they sign up at 6 a.m. on Tuesday, we're cool with it sending in, you know, a couple hours to get them started on this. Maybe you just want to wait for one hour. But this will essentially give you the ability to control when this whole thing starts, right? So when they enter this segment, it's going to wait one hour. And then the next time that it's between 9.30 and 10.30 on a Tuesday, it's going to continue and send this email. And so now we've kind of set up that first wait. Um, what we'll do next is take a look at what you might want to do based on their response, right? So a general con a general concept is that you know delivered but not opened is kind of your worst option. If they opened it, that's pretty good, but they didn't really engage with it. And then if they clicked on something within it, that's an indicator that they're more engaged than either of the other two options. And so you can decide kind of what you want to do based on those actions, right? And that's really depends on your business. Generally, a rule of thumb is that if someone is clicking on things, you might want to engage them a little more. And if someone is not, you might want to engage them a little bit less, right? Because if they're not engaging, you don't want to send them too much stuff or they're going to kind of cross that line and unsubscribe. Whereas someone who is actually clicking and engaging, you want to stay in front of them to make sure that you keep their interest and engagement going forward. But so a handful of different things that we can do here, right, based on these branches. Some people are going to want to do some scoring. Um, we didn't dive into scoring in this webinar, but you can set up scoring for campaigns as a whole or unique scoring rules within a particular workflow. Um, but in this case, right, we'll do something like, you know, add some kind of weight. Right. So again, it might be a similar scenario where we want to wait for, you know, a certain time of day, a certain day of the week. Right. Maybe in this case, we want to say they received that. We're cool with this sending any day of the week as long as it's between nine and ten. And maybe we want to say, hey, we don't want to, you know, send it on the weekend. 
But the power with these workflows comes in in the additional things that you can kind of do after the fact, right? So let's say that um, we have our weight condition here. I know it's getting a little a little tight. Let's see if it'll zoom out a bit. So we've got our weight condition here, and let's say if someone actually clicked on this first email, maybe we would want to send them an SMS, right? Something a little bit more direct because they actually gave us a really strong indicator that they're interested in what we're talking about. Whereas maybe someone who only opened the email will go ahead and put in a weight. You know, I'm going to skip the little criteria here just to save you some time. But maybe for them, we actually want to do a weight and then send an email instead, right? So you can essentially build out these workflows, not just to kind of send things in a sequence, but actually build in logic and controls based on the engagement that you're getting back from people and actually branch it even into different channels of communication, right? So you could say, once someone has clicked on three emails, add them to my highly engaged list and send them a survey, right? Whereas someone who doesn't open three emails in a row, maybe kick them out of this, right? And save that contact for something better later, rather than continually emailing them and getting to a place where they actually unsubscribe. And so again, there's a lot of different things you can do within here. Um, the last ones I'll highlight is that you can actually push data back to CRM. Um, this is one we do a lot. So maybe someone clicks three emails in a row. Let's make a task on that CRM record for the owner to actually give them a call, right? They're super engaged. Let's pick up the phone, see if we can get a meeting with them set up for whatever they're interested in. So a couple more options there with CRM integration. And then last but not least, there's a sneaky little cog up here that you want to look at for every single workflow. And so these basically do a couple different bits of flow control that are important to take note of. So if you want to have certain exit criteria um, that kicks someone out of a workflow, oftentimes this is something like their score, right? If their score ever goes above 100, they're now highly engaged, leave them alone and pick up the phone and call them. Um, it could also be based on certain field updates that they make. This one is the main one though that I wanted to show in this section. So if a contact no longer meets the criteria, right? And so in this case, this would be where maybe I'm on the phone with Will example, and they tell me the salesperson, I'm no longer interested in the newsletter, right? I can actually remove their field here, remove newsletter. That would actually sync over to campaigns they would exit that segment because they no longer meet the criteria. And then because they no longer meet it, they would remove themselves from the workflow as well. So that's a really, really important one. Um, you almost always, the default is, in my opinion, maybe wrong here. The default is no, keep them in even if they no longer match the criteria. But for me, almost nine times out of 10, I'm gonna actually remove them completely. Right? If they've indicated that they're no longer interested and we've removed them from that segment, there's no reason we would keep them in the newsletter welcome series. Because if we do and we email them again, you might push them into the realm of unsubscribing from you as a whole. Right, So it's really important to set these things up to not be too in people's faces, especially with topic management now. You can be very careful and get most people just to unsubscribe from topics. But if you're not sensitive to their preferences, they're going to unsubscribe from you as a sender, right? And then you don't really have a way to uh, re-engage with them. Lastly here, you can actually allow people to re-enroll, right? So maybe I left the segment and then I came back. Should it re-enter me into this workflow again? In this case, for a welcome series, I'd probably say no. Um, for other types of long-form drip content, you might say yes. But in this case, we'll leave this one off. And at that point, that pretty much covers everything for the workflows. Again, these are going to take some practice. You're always going to want to run a test, right? So maybe you run a test here and you do your weight conditions as really short and just run yourself through it, right? Just to be safe and make sure that, you know, everything's working the way that you anticipated. Once you feel good about it, though, you can go ahead and activate it and push it live to your subscribers. And then at that point, right, they'll pretty much just be running through this consistently. Anytime that a new person in this case enters the segment, they'll go ahead and drop right into this. Last little thing I'll show is that you can actually save this as a template. 
So maybe you had a pretty good game plan for a welcome series and you wanted to apply it to newsletter, product information and product promotion, right? And you kind of have this structure set up and you're just gonna swap the content. You can save it as a template and then use it that way going forward to save yourself some time. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you did find it useful, please again, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Uh, that really helps us out and it'll make sure that uh, YouTube shows you our videos in the future when we put out more tutorials just like this one. Um, if you do have any questions or feedback, uh, make sure to leave those in the comments as well. We really do appreciate that. Helps us get better and better. And uh, after all that, we will uh, see you on our next tutorial video.